By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a game between Dead Guy Ale and Red Burn. So the Dead Guy Ale deck is a deck that plays with the colors white and black. So here you see the Scrubland, we're probably going to see that duel in this matchup. And I know that this uh, Dead Guy Ale Brew also plays with blue power. Now we are also going to probably see the usual suspects. So the Hypnotic Spectres, Dark Ritual, Hypnotic Spectre, very classic play. Also the white component for control here. We've got four Swords to Plows here, four Disenchant, kind of enabling the Dead Guy Ale player to control the board. Now one of my favorite cards here, and I hope to see it a lot, is Juzam Jin. I mean, it's just a beautiful card. So maybe we're going to see uh, Land Lotus Juzam on turn one. Will probably mean I'm gonna lose, but hey, it will be pretty cool. So that is the Dead Guy Ill deck. Now let's take a look at the Red Burn player. So I am playing with a Red Burn deck and the deck is completely revised and uh, it's all built around this card, Earthbind. One of my favorite pieces of art when I started the game, uh, beautiful and not reprinted in 4th edition. So it always had this special, I always had this special link with the card and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a deck with four Earthbinds. Now, um, the Earthbind kind of led to Earthquake because when you're taking away all the flyers of your opponent, the Earthquake is even more efficient. So what I wanna do is play the Earthbind over the flyers and play a huge Earthquake, killing all his creatures and also dealing damage at the same time, which is great in a burn deck because obviously I'm going to play with two Fireballs and two Disintegrates. So I have four kind of burn spells to my disposal. I'm also playing with four lightning bolts as well. And to give my burn some more power, this deck also packs two mana flares and four mana volts. So there's a lot of mana ramp in this deck. And of course, if you have a deck where your idea is to take all the flyers away from your opponent, you are going to play with flyers as well. I'm playing with a full play set of dragon whelps and I'm playing with two sheaven dragons in this deck. So I'm really looking, uh, looking forward. I'm also playing with just a lot of other fun cards from uh, the Revised era. So this is really kind of an homage to Red Revised, which is, you know, I, I think it's, it's really beautiful, but you'll see. Let's quickly go to game one and, um, and have a look if I can um, do anything against this very powerful Dead Guy L deck. Game number one, and I am the player on the right, obviously with the Timmy playmat, playing my mono red revised deck, playing against Chef, that's the name of the player on the left, and he's playing with his dead guy Ilbrew. I can already see a Suchi in that hand. So let's see, I, I believe I have a wall of fire here. I really like the art uh, of the walls made by Richard Thomas. Very nice art. And look at this start. Wow, Black Lo Lotus into Underworld Dreams with a Scrubland. And I'm starting with a basic mountain. And there is a City of Brass taking a damage, my second damage already from that early Underworld Dreams. Second red passing turn here, taking one more damage. Factory in the play. Mana Vault now. Ooh, very quick disenchant. That's too bad because Mana Vault can really help me to bring out those big flyers. But it's not working. And there is a soul ring at least, but not a third mountain. Already on 16 and I'm wide open for an attack. Another underworld dreams taking six damage, going to 10, taking two damage from the dreams, going to eight. Things are looking bad for me here. Playing a wall of fire, at least being able to stop the Suchi next turn. Let's see what's going to happen next. And this game is just going south very quickly for me. On eight life here, and my opponent is still on 19. Playing a dark ritual. And there is a balance. And he's basically doing this as a mind twist. It means that I'm losing my hand here. Playing a lightning bolt. Obviously, I wanted to use the lightning bolt to take care of one of the factories attacking. But now that's no longer an option. Using the mana. Wow, look at this, using the mana from the Dark Ritual to activate the factories <laughs> and he's killing me. I'm, I guess he's killing me. Is he killing me? I can, I can block one using the Wall of Fire, going to four, taking two damage, 
And that's it, that's game. After that, after I lost my hand, you know, it's kind of game over for me. Unfortunately, I didn't see a Hypnotic Spectre because I did have an Earthbind in hand. So first win here for the Dead Guy Ill player. We're actually not going to sideboard. We're just going to go straight to game number two. Game number two, and I am on the play. So maybe that's going to help me a little. I mean, I was facing an Underworld Dreams turn one because of the Black Lotus. Um, let's see. I mean, obviously, it's a very strong deck that I'm playing against. But what I want to do is I want to play an Earthbind on a Hypnotic Spectre. That's my goal. Let's take a look. And turn one here, Mana Vault from, from my side. So that's pretty good. Ooh, again, a Dark Ritual turn one. Or I mean, uh, Underworld Dreams, Dark Ritual into an Underworld Dream. So that just means damage for me from the get-go. And look at that Disenchant. Not able to use that Mana Vault in my turn two. Couldn't play out a Dragon Whelp or an Earth Elemental or Fire Elemental. And... At least I'm doing something here, playing a Soul Ring and again a Wall of Fire. I only play with two Wall of Fires, by the way. I'm not playing with a full playset, so I'm not sure why I keep <laughs> I keep drawing them in my opening hands. And this is nice, the little book. So that means that uh, Chef can now start to discard cards and draw cards, finding exactly what he needs. There's the Mana Flare for my part, so I'm kind of setting up a lot of mana to possibly play out a Sheevan or play a very serious Fireball here. So we see an activation from the little book, discarding a balance, taking a damage here. Now remember, because of the Mana Flare, he gets double mana. So he's actually tapping here for, for five mana. And only needing four. Look at that. And that's a, a Sinkhole and a Disenchant. And I'm forking the Disenchant. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So forking the disenchant to destroy um, to destroy his underworld dream. So at least that's going to save me some damage. And there's another mana flare again. So he just got rid of one mana flare, and there's another one. And I'm curious here, playing a demonic tutor. Ay ay ay! What is he going to look up? Okay, this is classic, of course, demonic into ancestral recall. I mean, it's not the coolest play in the world, but it makes sense. So he's going to draw three cards here. And still having two mana because of that Mana Flare. So that's, of course, the problem with cards like Mana Flare is that you're helping your opponent as well. And look at him go, destroying another land. And let's see what I can do. Playing a Wheel of Fortune here. That's actually very good after that Ancestral Recall. So that's pretty nice. Drawing seven, probably playing, okay, still at one red floating, using it to play a Goblin Balloon Brigade, playing a mountain passing turn here. And at least I'm able to do a little bit more than I did in the first game. But I'm also allowing my opponent to do a lot here. And he has seven in hand and he has tons of mana because of my mana flare. Maybe maybe I should play Stone Rain right next to the Mana Flare. What do you think? Let me know in the comments because I'm, I'm seeing how well his sinkholes are performing. You know. And tapping here for four again. Even for six. For eight. What's going to happen? A really big uh, drain life? Playing a disenchant on my Mana Flare. He really doesn't like my mana flares. I'm playing a strip mine. <laughs> oh, I'm able to tap and play at least one lightning bolt on a hippie. Do I have an earth bind? No, another lightning bolt. I was hoping for an earth bind. Playing another goblin balloon brigade. I play a full play set in this deck. I think they're they're brilliant one drops when you're playing red. And in old school magic, you have a lot of one drop, one one flyers. Strangely enough, uh, white doesn't have a one drop, one one flyer. Oh, killing, killing, killing. And there goes my disintegrate and I'm showing it. I wanted to play a big disintegrate. 
Ay, 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 a mind twist. And here you can see like the brutal power of that guy ill. You've got so much destruction with, of course, um, the four swords and the four disenchants, but also just in this case, sinkholes. You've got mind twists. There's just so much destruction in this deck. And there we have the underworld dreams again. So I'm going to 17 here, attacking with two, making them flying because of the factory. That means that my opponent is going to 11. Let's see what else we can do here. I have that wall. And that little book is doing a lot of work here. And another hippie. Going to 16 because of the dreams. Playing a mountain. And of course I can possibly double block with my two goblin balloon brigades. And that's exactly what I'm doing. But, oh, yeah, it's going really quickly. It's hard to see, but he played a Swords to Plow Sears on one of my Goblin Balloon Brigades. And that's, of course, bad business for me because it means I miss both, lose both, both of my Goblins. And the Hippie is still alive. But I've played a Dragon Whelp, so that can definitely help me here. And there is a Suchi. So the Suchi can be blocked by the Wall of Fire. I've got the Dragon Whelp to deal with the Hypnotic Spectre. Attacking here, so maybe I have something in hand to deal with the Hippie. Let's see, is he going to block? I guess not. I'm not expecting him to. Pump it up, dealing 3 damage. And playing another Dragon Whelp, so he's now on 8. But he does have that double underworld dreams, making it really difficult for me. And the nice thing about this dead guy, Ildek, is that he is, his idea is, I, I think when I look at this deck, I'm going to destroy your land, destroy your creatures, destroy your artifacts. Oh, here we've got the play I was looking forward to. Ooh, bam. Earthbind on Hypnotic Spectre. There's no better feeling than that. Fantastic. Bye bye, hippie. Attacking here, dealing 4 damage with the Dragon Whelps. He's going to 4 life. And he's in serious pro trouble here. And that's it. That's game. So I'm winning this second game. So it's 1-1. One, one. And what I wanted to say about this dead guy, Ildek, is that you can see that his tactic, it looks like his tactic is destroy all your lands with, um, with sinkholes. Destroy all your creatures. Uh, strong creatures at least, relevant creatures. With Swords to Plows, you destroy all your artifacts and champs with disenchants. And then I have my Underworld Dream still on the table and that's going to deal you damage. And you know what? I can even use strong creatures to accelerate the process. But those Underworld Dreams are the constant source of damage. So it's very nice to see that, very interesting. But here it's 1-1, one, one, so that means we're going to game number three. Game number three is about to start and that means that the Dead Guy Ale player can start again. Which is a big advantage in this matchup because that, that deck just can go so quickly with Dark Rituals. Of course the Moxen in there, we haven't seen a lot of them actually. Oh, it looks like I, I'm taking a Mulligan here, putting one card on the bottom, keeping the rest of my hand. Six in hand there, I believe. Not ideal of course, but at least I'm on the draw so I can go to seven again. Ooh, Library of Alexandria. Aye, aye, aye. There I go. Pretty good opening for me here, Mana Vault turn one, if I can use it. But that Loa is going to be a huge problem. Look at this. Two Dark Rituals. So first a Lotus, second for three black, I guess. Using it to, to cast two Dark Rituals. So that means seven mana here. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Look at how explosive that turn one is. Boom. And another Earthbind play at least. But we still have the Suchi there. And there is an attack here. And I'm going to 17. So very explosive turn one here from the Dead Guy Ill player. And so far, every game he's had a very explosive turn one. Look at this. An Earthquake here. 4-4, four, four, destroying the Suchi, giving my Goblin Balloon Brigade flying to save him from the damage. Uh, but the problem is it's also damaging me. And I'm on four, and I also have a Mana Vault that's dealing a damage to me. It's looking very bad for me. Again. And I think what this 
game is really showing is the importance of land removal. I should have maybe boarded in or stone rains or shatter. Shatters to deal with the factories and stone rains just to deal with the factories or any other lands like the Loa for instance. It's really, I think against this deck, let me know what you think. I think I should have boarded in stone rains. But look at this, I'm, I'm kind of staying alive in some weird kind of way here with the lightning bolt on the Mishra's factory. And yeah, this is it. Oh, I had a fire elemental in hand. I, 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 I think this third, third game just went too quickly for me. I think that opening of uh, Chef, the dead guy ill player, was just too strong. Congratulations for winning this um, matchup. Like, <laughs> boom, <laughs> that opening. I mean... What was it again? Black Lotus into Double Dark Ritual and then playing a Hypnotic Spectre and a Suchi. That is just ridiculous. Well, congratulations on this victory. Wow, what a game that was. Well, a nice game for me just to play with my mono red deck. I always like it. I love casting Wall of Fire, even though it's pretty useless, but still. Uh, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing if you're not subscribed yet, and of course, sharing the video on your socials. Um, and you can now also become a patron of the show. Um, so you can go to patreon.com slash timmytalks. And I'm actually very proud that at this point, I already have, or the show has 12 patrons. And I would like to say a special hello to my new patrons, Avert and Romnan. So Avert and Romnan, welcome aboard of the pirate ship. And let's take a look at the credits showing all the other patrons of the show. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.